How will Riot monetize their MMO? This is a video by Shambits Gaming. It's a very small channel, but apparently, very small, he's double my size, so I'm a loser. But apparently, there's leaks about the Riot MMO and how they are gonna do. Uh, for all you that don't know, Riot is developing an MMO. It's uh, based on the League of Legends universe, apparently. Okay, let's see what he has to say. Too many MMO RPGs that require a subscription fee nowadays, with the main two being Final Fantasy XIV and World of Warcraft, which are both titans of the genre. They're huge. Now it's hard to believe, but there was a time when paying monthly via a subscription was the norm for most MMORPGs, and free to play was the alien unproven concept that no one wanted to try, at what least for us MMO do? gamers in the West. It had been a thing in the East, Sorry about career that. MMOs for quite a while. Well, today we do know better, and the free to play experiment that really picked up steam in the mid to late 2000s has absolutely proven itself to be a far better business model, a far more profitable business model than Extremely. the traditional method of just selling the game, which was the norm back then, as I say. Guys, let me tell you something. Did you guys know? Did you guys know that for the average phone game, the lifespan value, this is a marketing term, lifespan value means all the amount of money that a player on average will spend on the game before they quit. The lifespan value of an average player is $250. That is counting all the people that download the game and instantly quit. That is counting all the people that download the game and never buy anything. That is still makes it up in the average and the average is still $250 a player. That is just insane. And sometimes people wonder how the hell is Red Shadow Legends in every YouTube video sponsoring everybody. This is why. If you make $250 every time you acquire a customer, you can afford to have insane customer acquisition uh, spendings. So like for them making a paying like $1,000 for a YouTube ad on a video with say... 5,000 viewers, they would probably still break even because it would only take them five people to download the game to make up for the, the, the money they, they spend. It is crazy. It's so much better that many of the highest performing video games now use that free to play model. And many other games have been forced to adopt this model even if they didn't want to. Star Wars The Old Republic launched in December of 2011 and moved to a free-to-play model less than a year later in November of 2012. And the News outlets at the similar. time were reporting that this was due to low subscriber numbers, which painted a pretty bleak picture for the game. However, EA put out a earning report just six months later, stating that their average monthly revenue had doubled since it went free-to-play. Wow. It wasn't just Star Wars either. Lord of the Rings Online had pretty much the same experience, but they had a 400% increase in players, and that also led to their monthly revenue doubling when they went free to play. Now, this is great for business, don't get me wrong, but it's not always so great for us as players. There are some downsides that seem to constantly appear in games that use the free to play. And by the way, like uh, he's probably gonna talk about this, but Riot has always made only free to play games, so this MMO is probably gonna be free to play too. And I don't know if they ever pulled off like a good free to play MMO ever, like anybody. Uh, sorry, Lotro enjoyers in the chat. I don't like Lotro, I think he's very crappy, but yeah. Play model. And these downsides are often referred to collectively by us as pay to win, or to a lesser extent, pay to progress. MMOs, even sub-based ones, aren't shy about advertising services that benefit the player in some way, and because MMOs usually have Masochists. a ton of different activities that you can do, this also creates a ton of opportunities for the developer to make money from you in the form of microtransactions. Things like buying in-game currency with real-life money, weapon skins, armor skins, mounts, mount skins, pets, toys, character slots, race changes, buying levels, emotes, convenience items, the ability to get married with another character in game, Final Fantasy does this, in-game houses, stuffed animals oh for your in-game house, furniture for your house, crafting materials, upgrade materials, there's so much that they can sell you. And it's not like I even thought hard about that list. It took me about 30 seconds to put that together. And some of those are just off the top of my head. It's not even in the script. Now you can argue that most of that, if not all of it, is optional, okay? And you never need to spend a penny on any of it. That is true. But studios need to make their money somehow. 
and those that go free to play have to rely entirely on these microtransactions to keep their business running, which can create some very aggressive monetization strategies that can pretty much ruin an otherwise good game. Lost Ark and Diablo Immortal are- Okay, I think this is one thing that's gonna be different uh, because we've seen it kind of happen in Valorant and whatnot and Lure Rune Terra, Legends of Rune Terra, oh my God, all Riot Games. League of Legends was so damn popular because they first made an extremely solid game for free and worried about making money after. And yes, League of Legends makes an insane amount of money, even though it doesn't make as much money as, say, Diablo Immortal or something like that, per player, obviously. But the genius that made League of Legends a successful game is probably not going to be present in the MMO. Because they are not going to be trying to make a great video game first and monetize it later. If they are making an MMO, you can bet your boot they are going to design every single freaking gameplay mechanic to, in a way, be monetized. Why wouldn't they? Two very recent and obvious examples of good games being brought down by their invasive monetization strategies. Which, whilst you don't have to spend the money, you'll want to if you want to enjoy the game and get the most out of them. Okay, uh, this is a great analogy by Bellular, Bellular, great boy. He said playing WoW, and I'm going to use it for the monetization because it's still a great analogy. Uh, he was talking about playing WoW than crappy systems, but monetization for a video game is like a deck in your salad. Yeah, you know, you can still eat the salad, you can still like... Get, get your fork and eat around the salad, uh, around the deck, you, you don't have to eat the deck. But why, the deck is still in the salad, okay? It's not gonna be an enjoyable dinner. Yeah, that's how I feel about the video game monetization. Other games are a bit less aggressive, such as Final Fantasy XIV, which is almost entirely cosmetic based, and there's no need to spend additional money to enjoy the game in a reasonable capacity, as content isn't gated behind these microtransactions, like Lost Ark with its upgrade system. Now, back in 2014, Pete Hines, the marketing lead for Elder Scrolls Online, attempted to justify their subscription fee by stating that it allowed the development team to focus 100% on content creation. And if they had <laughs> chosen free to play instead, then a portion of the development resources would be spent on creating cosmetics for the store and not on content for the game. Now, Elder Scrolls dropped their sub fee model just over a year after release, and today the game has a microtransaction store with everything from loot boxes, mounts, pets, houses, furniture, crops. Anybody remember how Elder Scrolls Online came out? It was a nightmare. Like people say Fallout 76, the meme, or like all the failure. Bethesda has consistently been releasing games that are extremely broken way before Fallout 76, okay? Uh, Elder Scrolls Online was unfreaking playable when it came out, and they demanded you would pay 15 bucks a month for that piece of crap, uh, plus the purchase of the game. Yeah, uh, you know, look up, uh, what's it called, Angry Joe. Angry Joe made like a 40 minute rant about all the bugs. There was 40 minutes worth of bugs in Elder Scrolls Online when it came out and all the awful things that happened in it. Uh, beautiful video, uh, great time capsule. This game... Is good now, I get it, but it wasn't good when it came out. Crafting tools, bank space upgrades, face paint, armor sets, and so on. A lot of these smaller things in there cost around six pounds, but the things that you care about, like mounts or player houses, can set you back as much as 3,000 or 15,000 crowns, respectively. Now, of course, you can't buy 15,000 crowns, so you have to buy the 21,000 crown bundle which will set you back a total of 110 that every real freaking life game nowadays to get that player house. At least you'll have some crowns left over to buy some furniture, because that player house doesn't come furnished. <laughs> Guild Wars 2 is similar with its approach to cosmetics, but most outfits are about 700 gems, which will set you back around £8.50 real life money, with the most sought after items being around 1,600, which will cost you about £17 real life money, which by comparison, doesn't that is still a so scam, bad. Though. I ripped on Guild Wars 2 in a previous video of mine. Comparatively, Guild Wars 2 is looking pretty good. Other really MMOs also way. restrict players from key features unless you engage in that cash shop. Lord of the Rings, as I spoke about earlier, for example, requires you to spend real life money to use mounts and increase your gold cap from a measly baseline of two gold. Star Wars does something similar, but it's far more generous with a cap of one million credits, which is enough to get you most of the things you want 
Although Star Wars does restrict content in other ways, such as rewarding you with less credits overall if you're not a subscriber, they don't allow you to quick travel as often. Isn't it funny that I think that the Guild Wars 1 is a superior game than uh, freaking... Uh, what's it called? Than freaking Guild Wars 2? Oh, sorry about that, my chat is lagging a little bit. So what was I saying anyway? Yeah, it was, it was awful. I was in the alpha and beta of Elder Scrolls Online. It was terrible. It's fairly good now though. So it's Fallout 76 actually. Uh, I don't care though. That's, that's the whole thing with me. You spite me once, you spite me forever. Look at me and my relation with Turtle Wow or whatever. Like, I, I do not let things go. Often they restrict how often you can take part in PvP and a few other things like that. So how does this all compare to what we know about Riot? Well, today Riot have focused almost entirely on optional cosmetics and have not yet implemented any monetization systems in League or Valorant that make it feel necessary to spend your money. Now, you could argue that new champions in League or agents in Valorant are exactly that, but the reality you... is they're pretty easy to unlock by just playing the game for a few yeah. hours. They also don't really go... Back in the day, back in like 2015, 2014, it was pretty hecking expensive to get champions. It would take you a, lo a long amount of grinding to get the new champions that were expensive. Nowadays, with all the like the disenchanting stuff they added to the Riot game, to the League of Legends, you can get a new champion right away. It's... it's really easy like you play five ten games and you get a champion is it's like literally nothing overboard with what they can monetize pretty much just sticking to putting skins on things that don't impact the integrity of the game even though they could easily go further with this dota 2 as an example sells well no of that's the thing that's the thing in league of legends you could never get away with doing that because the integrity of the competition of the game which is something that's very important for a moba will be compromised that's the reason that league of legends is the most comp uh, important game in the whole hacking thing uh, that's why league of legends is the, one of the most popular games in the world because of the competitive aspect for it if you taint a sport nobody's gonna watch it nobody's gonna care about it and the player base is probably gonna die too uh, like they could make a quick buck now, but Riot understands that having League of Legends turns into a media sports sensation is a lot more important than making a few measly bucks of a, of a few people that are loose with money. And I don't think that's going to happen with the MMO though. That's a different beast, because it is not a competitive esports game. That makes it easier to see pass through trees, and Counter-Strike sells skins for their characters, which give you an advantage in the game, which is not good for a competitive esport. And it's not just Valve either, as Rainbow Six Siege had a similar issue with their Ember Rise and Elite skin lines. There's a person in this screenshot. It's very hard to tell oh when you're my playing God. the game in the moment. Now, Riot are yet to make these same mistakes with League or Valorant, and this gives me a lot of confidence that whatever we do get from them will have a minimal impact to the quality of the game as an MMO, they seem to care about the quality and integrity of their games. Now, the downside here is that Riot does have a history of charging large sums of money. Ghost Crawler, didn't that, that guy work for WoW? Then be exchanged for those cosmetics, which in my opinion is a pretty insidious way of tricking people into spending their money as it's harder to keep track of what you're spending over time. However, it's industry norm. Everyone does it, so I can't really fault Riot Games. I mean, you can. In particular. However, they but do run it. their skins on limited availability, which preys on that feeling of missing out, right? Because someone will have a skin line that you don't have, and you can't buy it anymore. So it makes you want to spend your money on something that's not particularly wear, which I have wrong. done plenty of times. Let's be honest. Now, just to give you an example of this, as I record this video, Valorant has the Xeno Hunter set available for purchase within the store. And as cool as these skins are, they are very cool. The entire bundle, which consists of four guns and a knife, cost 7,100 Valorant points, meaning you would have to buy the 90 pound bundle in order to acquire oh this set God, of four imagine guns. Being such a loser. Now, there are 17 guns in the game total. So you're looking at hundreds of pounds before you have skins for all of them. League skins by comparison are much cheaper than Valorant, but there are far more characters to buy skins for and generally more things to spend your money on. 
such as rune pages, clash tickets, chromas, loot boxes, little legends, uh, battle passes, and whatever else is, is there in the league client. There's tons of stuff. You could even buy temporary skins in ARAM. Now, acquiring skins for your guns and characters is completely optional and does not impact the gameplay negatively, at least in my opinion. So many of you may argue that this is not a problem. But as we've seen with other MMOs that we've spoken about already in this video, games that rely primarily on cash shops for their money often leads to cosmetics in the store that far outshine those that you can earn in the game, as well as a bunch of convenience items that solve problems which shouldn't be problems in the first place, which I don't personally want. Guild Wars 2 is really bad at this. So what do I think we'll get? Well, it's tough to answer this. I've spoken to a few people and they just say it will be like League and Valorant with tons of cosmetics. But MMOs are nothing like those games. The player experience is far more personal. You play the same character in an expansive world That's for it. several years, not just for 40 minutes or 50. In, that was uh, what I was going to say. Uh, he kind of stopped in the middle of the pause. In League. I have the high noon You're supposed skin to grind on stuff of my in characters MMO. in League. That's the and difference. if they release a high noon set for the MMO, I'm going to buy it. But I'm only going to buy it once because I play one character, not seven. So where does this leave Riot? A company who has, through the sale of cosmetics, found themselves at the top, arguably, of the gaming world. Do they do what they do with Valorant and try to get players to spend £90 on one skin? Or do they progressively make better skins that supersede the old ones so you spend another £90 on another skin? No, I don't think that's realistic. I think what is far more likely is that they will monetize more than just cosmetics. And that is why it's so hard to know what we get. I mentioned earlier that Riot seem to avoid monetizing anything that compromises the integrity of their game. It's the reason we don't have skins for Valorant agents or skins- Legends of Runeterra. <laughs> Oh, sorry, 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 I got a cough. Yeah, Riot would never do that. ...for the Rift in League. Sure, it'd make a ton of money, but the game would be worse for it as it would erode what those games are. It creates a gap in the player experience, which in a competitive game is not what you want. You want that to be as close as possible. And as we've seen in this video, the vast majority of stuff that's in microtransaction shops for MMOs, and I'm yet to see one that doesn't do this, restricts the game in some manner in order to justify the sale of the solution, therefore eroding what that game is. Whatever it might be, the game is worse for it when that stuff is in the cash shop and not just in the game anyway. So this is Riot's problem to solve. We don't want £90 skins in our MMO and we don't want £30 Unbreakable Gathering tools I don't in mind the £90 or even £8 skins in an MMO. So People want skins, I don't care. So what can they do? It's a tough problem to solve. But there is quite an easy solution here, at least I think so. And that is the subscription fee. Now look, look, they are I not know gonna they do haven't it. worked in the they are not gonna do cases, it. But, but hear me That's out. That's just here. silly. The talent in Riot's MMO team... This is really stupid. This is really stupid. Let me tell you why. Most of League of Legends players, most of Riot Games players in general come from third world countries, uh, Southeast Asia, Latin America like myself, you know, Africa, whatever you want to call it. Uh, they have a huge, and I mean huge... Uh, third world market, third world, that this uh, a subscription model traditionally would never work on a third world market and they know this, they are never ever gonna make it a subscription model. Uh, you can you can find fiction and LARP and pretend it's gonna happen, that's never gonna happen, okay? It's extraordinary, so I do believe that whatever it- Even if they wanted to, it would not work. This release, whatever game comes from this, it will be a good game. I believe that wholeheartedly. I have no doubt in that. Riot also have very little shareholder pressures, so I don't think the game will be forced out early or unfinished. So not only will I think it will be a good game, I think it will be a relatively complete game to a high standard of quality. Riot is also a huge brand with loyal, uh, albeit sometimes toxic, fan base, <laughs> and who will, at the very least, think about downloading and playing the MMO. Outside of that Riot fan base, there is a huge community of MMO gamers who are ready for something new and they're looking for a shake up in the genre, something new to try. So much so, the games like Lost Ark, which are known to be predatory in their monetization, were hyped up before release. Now, these MMO players, for the most part, are used to paying a subscription fee as well, whether that's World of Warcraft or Final Fantasy, just to play the game, or if it's something like a VIP type system that we see in Elder Scrolls Online, Star Wars, and Lord of the Rings. And finally, it's Riot. And it's an MMO. The hype for this thing will be and is already. Oh, huge. I'm gonna try it, obviously. I'm gonna try it. You can imagine. A subscription fee, 
It's going Everybody to be will. Riot game. Now, as much as I'm an advocate for it, I actually do not think that we'll get a subscription fee. Riot have mastered the free-to-play model over the past decade, and I'd be surprised to see them step away from it. Even an upfront box price would surprise me, I think. Now, what is far more likely, at least in my opinion anyway, is a seasonal battle pass type system where you progress through 50 or so levels by completing in-game missions, like defeat five dungeons, kill a certain boss, win some PvP matches, you know, things like that. The rewards in that battle pass would range from character cosmetics, pets, mounts, skins, emotes, toys, and uh, also currency for a dedicated cash shop. I think that cash shop will have limited runs of skin line bundles similar to Valorant, which you can buy unlocking, say, a high noon set that consists of the armor, weapon skins, uh, as well as some maybe emotes and pets and things like that. I would guess these things would be around the £30 mark and probably change each season. This is just from the skin lines that they point. already know are successful in League, like uh, Battle Academia or the Anima Squad, Star Guardian, High Noon, uh, the Ashen Knight stuff, you know, things like that. They've got so much to pull from and deliver that I think it would be bizarre for them not to sell skins on those on those lines there. So anyway, there are what are your thoughts? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? It's one of the Put best in the, in the industry. Below. If you don't have any thoughts at all, uh, then just throw an emoji down there as it tells YouTube that you enjoyed the video and it helps the channel grow. So you'd be doing me a huge favor by doing that. I also do try to respond to all comments, so I'll see you down there. Anyway, as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Okay, so this is Shambis Gaming once again. He's an up-and-coming channel. I'm gonna link it for all you so you can go subscribe to him. Much love. This is a great video. Uh, sadly, no. No, 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 no. This is gonna be a free-to-play game and it's gonna have microtransactions. I know, I'm such a doomer. People are gonna hate me for it. They always tell me I'm dooming and dooming and dooming and dooming. But you, can, you know what? You know what? I, I mean it. They are gonna monetize more than skins. They will be fools not to. An uh, MMO is a completely different beast. Most people are not even gonna care. And that's the saddest part. They are not a publicly traded company, but they still gonna make money at the end of the day. So even though they don't have the stupid pressures that ruin Blizzard, they are gonna have their own pressures, with which may or may not ruin them. And that's pretty much it. Anyway, if you like this video, please subscribe and hit the notification bell for we got a lot more coming. And join the Discord, it's on the description. Join the Discord, we got a bunch of cool stuff in there. We got uh, events, we got everything, okay? Join.